Hey guys, what's up? We have another game for the EMBA Zapdos Draft League. This time around against A12 QSD. Um, he might not be the biggest like name right now, you guys know nowadays, but he actually won the first three editions of the EMBA Zapdos League, and it's a pretty prestigious league with some of the best draft league players. So right off the bat, I knew that I was going to have my hands full. I was told these are really creative players. I was really looking forward to this match. Let's get on into the teams, though. Okay, guys, so those are our teams, as you should be able to see. Let me just double-check. Yeah, you should be able to see our team. So I have the same team, but just to read off the list again, it's Gliscor, Victini, Toxpec, Sylveon, Mega Aerodactyl, Metagross, Tyranitar, Kofagagus, Rotom, Fan, and Grottle. Um, this time, we were facing an interesting team from the opponent. Um, the Sprites didn't copy too well because he wasn't next in the sheet, but it's Melmetal, Mega, Metacham, Dracovish, Hippowdon, Kyurem, Crobat, Umbreon, Runerigus, Dra Dragonite, Ampharos, and Aaron. So yeah, I knew right off the bat he probably wasn't going to use Aaron, but something that looked really good against me actually from his lower tier picks was um, Ampharos. Um, in particular because it could potentially run Heal Belt, which could allow for him to run a baton past Umbreon. I was actually expecting a defensive core with that, but he ends up bringing Ampharos without Umbreon for a totally different reason, which is hilarious, and we're going to get into it. Um, he also has Mega Metacham, Dracovish, and Charm, which all do really well against my Gliscor, so because of that, I like not to bring Gliscor. In fact, the team I brought was Victini, Toxpec, Sylveon, Mega Aerodactyl, Metagross, and Kofagrius. Um, right off the bat, one thing I noticed is he has a lot of physical attackers, but all the physical attackers do really well against Gliscor. Metal Metal, Metal, Metal can live in Earthquake, two Earthquakes easily, and Ice Punch me. Metal Gem can Ice Punch me. Dracovish can just nuke me and live two Earthquakes. Um, Jerem could potentially be physical or mixed, and of course it beats Gliscor. Yeah, and Crobat, it could probably taunt me, and you know, eventually Brave Bird, Rockerbat, Addict, Zerumi, so yeah. Um, Dragonite could even run, you know, mix sets with Ice Beam, etc. So yeah, um, I was expecting him to run my metal, Metagem, Dracovish, Hippowdon, Kyurem, and Umbreon. Or Ampharos over the Kyurem, because I have Sylveon plus Victini plus Metagross for the Kyurem. So yeah, I wasn't expecting the Dragonite much, because I have Metagross, Tyranitar, Sylveon, Toxpex, you know, a lot of things to check all of, like, variety of sets on it. But I knew right at the bat, Metacham, I'd have to bring Kofagrius for. My metal, I actually wanted to bring Rock Yell and Metagross for. Dragonfish, I wanted to bring Iron Defense, Toxic and Toxic Spikes for. And I'm sure I wanted to bring Sylveon for. So finally, I get to bring Sylveon. But all this, yeah, it basically meant I couldn't use Gliscor and all these Pokemon as well. So I dropped Gliscor, and right at the bat, I knew I wanted some breaking power because I figured if he doesn't bring Umbreon, or even if he does, um, a 4 attacks Victini with U turn and just always poses a threat and gains momentum at worst case scenario, but best case scenario poses a major threat to him. So I ran Blue Flare plus. Glaciate plus Grass Knot. Grass Knot actually is doing north of 40% to Dracovish and also doing a ton to Powdown. Blue Flare plus Grass Knot is going to two kill it always. Um, Blue Flare is also great against Metacham and um, Crobat for two kills. Kyurem, two kills offensive range as well. And Glaciate is really cool for Dragonite on top of all that. So, yeah, and U turn was cool to catch Umbreon, which is delightful. So, I actually ran Max Speed plus Speed to outrun all Dracovish, Kyurem. That weren't Scarf, and also at worst, speed ties Battle Champ, but I thought he'd run Adamant, so that was helpful as well. As for Toxic, I ran Max Physical Defense because, again, his only special attacker is Jerem, and I'm not keeping it in on that. Besides, potentially a Spex Ampharos, which, spoiler alert, he brought, but oh god, excuse me, I'm sorry, I just had a lot of water right before this video. Um, wow, that's totally my bad, I didn't mean that, that but um, anyway, so I brought Physical Defense to Pax, it did really well against his team. I ran Iron Defense, which helps against Mega Metachamp Champ and Dracovish. And I guess maybe Dragon Dance, uh, Dragonite, although not really. But anyway, Toxic Spikes is um, really good against Metagam, Dracovis, Hippowdon, Kyurem, Umbreon, and Ampharos. So I'm like, you know what? I'm running Toxic Spikes. And then I just ran, filled up the set with Knockoff because I didn't have a Knockoff user. And um, Scald. Uh, no, and, and sorry, Recover, of course. Um, so yeah, that was actually really helpful in this game. I'll get to it in a bit. Sylveon, I just ran a mostly physical defensive set with some special defense. Sure, I live two specs Ice Beam from Kyurem. Hyper Voice. Um, wish protect and I felt I didn't need hydro uh, heal bell. Sorry, I don't know if I said hydro pump. Um, because he wasn't running a ton of status in these teams, he looked like he kind of had a more offensive post in most matches. But also, this team tends to play more offensive, there's not much status inducing to be done. Um, maybe toxic about him, but that's the extent of it. And with Gliscor on my team, I didn't think he'd use that. Um, so anyway, yeah, I ran baton pass last to help generate momentum and pass wishes. Um, Mega Aerodactyl, I knew I wanted to use as a revenge killer. I knew he had more metal and a powder on to kind of keep me in check, but I knew that with the right support, and I had the right support, I'd be able to keep them in check. Um, particularly, I had Toxic Metagross to help chip those down um, with Rocky Helmet for Melmetal. So yeah, um, I ran Earthquake plus Aqua Tail plus Stone Edge. I knew that Aqua Tail or Earthquake would do enough to Metagam um, to like 2 it so it can't switch in safely and like, counter me. Stone Edge is really good against Kyurem, Crobat, Umbreon, um, Dracovish, and um, 
Aqua Tail is great against Tapadon. So yeah, I felt pretty confident there. Um, I even ran Adamant with like a pimped out physical defense on this, which actually helped me live um, live an Outrage from Dragonite. Or um, I think I lived a Zen Headbutt from Metajam after like Stealth Rocks or something like that. It was ridiculous. I was really bulky. Oh yeah, and if I roosted on Hippowdon going for Earthquake, then I always lived that Earthquake as well, which is a really cool calc as well. And I could live a bulkier um, Ice Beam or Freeze Drive from Kyurem too. So yeah, and I did run Adamant with Near Max Attack, I believe. Um, and I didn't really need any speed, I just ran like a little creep in case he like tried to scarf something like just over the USB Dactyl. But anyway, um, then Meg Meg Metagross was my next pick, not Mega Metagross, just regular Metagross, of course. Um, Stealth Rock, Meteor Mash, Earthquake Toxic with a ton of physical defense to always live um, a Banded Dracovish Vicious Rend, or maybe always live like a uh, Vicious Rend after like, I, I can't remember, I'm so sorry. But more importantly, it always lived two Earthquakes from Powdown so I could stand it, set up rocks, and then get a Toxic off if I needed to. Um, it always was living. Easily two choice banded double iron bashes from Melmetal and forcing Double Rock Yaman onto it. Always living even an adamant high jump keeper Meta Mag Jam. So yeah, forget the Dragfish Cox. I'm sorry guys. But yeah, and then also like anything from Crobat besides like a nasty plot heat wave bounced off and with Aerodactyl, Rotom Fan, and Tyranitar Victini, there's no way he's running nasty plot. So yeah. And there's also a soft tech to non mixed Dragonite, physical Dragonite. I didn't bring Tyranitar because I couldn't afford it, but also it did poorly against Melmetal, Meta Jam, Dracovish, Hip Out On, and um he was probably bringing all four of those Pokemon, so I just didn't see a need to. But last but not least, I ran uh, Kofaragus. This time around, I didn't run Iron Defense because I noticed he had a Crobat. So I ran Calm Mind, um, Shadow Ball. I ran Body Press anyway because I was running Max Physical Defense and it hits Umbreon. But also, it hits harder against um, Kyurem and Mometal too, potentially. Um, especially if it's an offensive Mometal without Defense EVs because like, the Defense EVs in Mometal just takes Shadow Ball more damage. And yeah, I ran Pants Bolt last. I just ran Bold. A lot of Physical Defense on that. So yeah, as for what I was expecting from him, I thought I'd run either an Aka or Shukaberry Melmetal with like four attacks, or maybe sub three attacks. I thought it'd just be a little bit more offensive. Metacham, I, I kind of thought he'd maybe try and like run some chat to set the cheese Kofarigus with like um, Toxic or something, but ultimately beyond that, I figured Fake Out, High Jump Kick, and Ice Punch and Zen Headbutt were all good options. So probably three of those four plus Toxic, or maybe just all four of those and just saying, okay, I'll muscle through Kofarigus or he won't bring it. Dragonfish, I expected either Choice Bandit or like sub Whirlpool Psychic Fangs. Um, Life Orb Draco Meteor passed my head, but it didn't do enough even the physical defensive talk spec, so he wasn't going to use that. He powered on, I was just expecting Stoth Rock with Toxic or Whirlwind. Um, Whirlwind made a bit more sense for Gliscor, but yeah. Um, I was really thinking he dropped Kyurem, um, but if he did bring it, I figured he'd run physical or like mixed with Life Orb. Um, it can't Iron Hit Sylveon, so yeah, that'd be cool. So that's why I had a lot of physical defense on Sylveon, but also I could keep that in check with Metagross and Victini too, as I live non-spec Dracos with ease. Um, yeah, Crobat, I didn't actually think he'd bring either because I've got Aerodactyl, Metagross, Tyranitar, Rotom Fan, Victini, even Toxpex, you really can't do much against, but it was his primary defogger, so I figured, okay, then maybe that's possible. Honestly, that's the one thing I don't like about his draft, um, the reliance on Crobat, because I don't think it's a great Pokemon, but it is a momentum generator, and it's really good with heavy duty boots and against fire types at least, so there are some positives. Anyway, I thought he was going to bring Umbreon with just like a Wish Shield Bell set for my status, um, because I do use a lot of status, but ultimately he didn't bring it, which was actually really helpful and surprising to me. Um, I thought that the next most likely Pokemon were both Dragonite and Ampharos kind of on equal footing. Um, Dragonite, I figured, would be a mixture like a Dragon Dance set. Ampharos, I figured, would be like a utility set because it has cool utility and it could open up Umbreon's fourth move. And also help checking um, Tox Specs a ton. Because this guy doesn't love Tox Specs with his offensive core, especially being full bunker variants. Um, in fact, I was thinking it might be the um, Protective Patch Dragonfish to help with that. But I don't know. Um, ultimately, he actually brought Specs, so shows what I know. I knew he wasn't going to bring Aaron just because it's a really gimmicky Pokemon. I have a Ghost type for Endeavor, so... Yeah, anyway, now that we went through this, let's get into the game. It's not a long one, it's a pretty quick game, so yeah, it won't take forever. All right, guys, we're back in the game between me and um, A12. So yeah, I brought my team, and he um, didn't bring Umbreon or Dragonite or Kerim, which was a little surprising. Um, he brought Crobat plus Ampharos, so some interesting picks there. Um, I guess he didn't expect it to bring Gliscor, which makes Ampharos a really smart bring, especially Specs Ampharos, because as you see, it literally does 50, over 50% 50 to Sylveon with Thunderbolt. And my electric resist is quite literally non-existent in this matchup. So if he gets Ampharos in a lot, that's a huge problem because I just, I'm, I'm kind of pressed. But thankfully, Sylveon can still have two hits after, like, Wish Protect, you know. So if he's not well when to pad on, then it's okay. Um, although Double Iron Bash, Melmetal can come in repeatedly or Dragfish can come in repeatedly. So yeah, I got to be careful. Thankfully, um, Metacham, Dragfish, need to learn Throat Chop. So I can run Hyper Voice over Moonblast on this team. But anyway, let's get into the game here. I'm like, okay, I'm leading Victini because I believe he's going to lead Melmetal or um, Metacham. And I go... To blue flare knowing that if he's Akabari and lives, then he can't kill with Earthquake. Yeah, so that's fine with me. I could always wish past this later on. 
And now he goes Dracovish as I am. Go U turn, predicting a switch to like either that or especially a defensive bow down. Just knowing, okay, I want to get momentum. So I go Toxics here and I want to get my Toxic Spikes up. So I do that and I'm like, okay, he's sub, but he's left over. So I wish I was Baneful Bunker because that would just win. But Iron Defense does the trick as well. And I think his play here is to fish for a critical hits and gain leftovers because I can't break the sub. But for some reason, he goes right out to Crobat. I think that was a little bit short sighted by him. I think he could have just fished for a couple crits. He didn't really mind Psychic Fang PP there. Um, it would have also forced me to use more recovers, but yeah, um, I digress. I knock off the Crobat as he goes for Defog, and then he taunts, I go Toxic Spike. So I just go out to Metagross. Um, he knows I don't have Skulls at that point, because my last move, I've revealed all four moves, actually, because I also went for Iron Defense. So he goes Brave Bird, knowing I can't do much to him, and it only does 9% into my Fizzler, which is Metagross. I get Toxic, he goes to Powdown, and I Toxic it as he predicts a switch to something like Victini or um, Colfaragus. So he goes Toxic himself, does it again. So now I've got two turns of Toxic on him, and I force him out as it's racking up. And he goes to his non-heavy duty boots Crobat. I go Toxic Spike trying to bait the Defog so I can get my Aerodactyl in. Because now that his Powdown's weakened and Toxic and Metal's almost dead, this Aerodactyl is going to rain free. I go Aquatel here and I actually get max damage with this because I'm looking at the rolls. And if this is closer to min damage, then Earthquake is always going to kill here. So I go Earthquake, but yeah, it only does 20%, which is min damage Earthquake. So um, again, the odds are actually in his favor to live both. I'm not trying to complain. I'm just saying why he went for it over Aquatel. But he only gets a Toxic off on me. He doesn't know if he has like Stone Edge or anything to do much damage. That's fine. Um, anyway, he threatens me out with more metal. I just trade my rocks for momentum, basically. Um, for like my Metagross, rather. And then I gain momentum. So yeah, he goes Earthquake predicting that. And then Tua kills me as I go for the quicker rocks. I Blue Flare into Dracovish here. Um, leaving it at 46% of the leftovers. Um, Grass Knot needs absolute max damage to kill this. Despite being 120 base power, it's still only neutral attack. Um, but one thing that's like, okay. He's going to go for Psychic Fangs predicting Toxic or he's going to try and, like, you know, his Psychic Fangs is the only play that makes sense going for predicting Toxics. He's, like, really far behind right now. So, yeah, I predict him to go Psychic Fangs, and I stay and I go for Grass, not knowing, okay, I also don't want to risk my Toxics' life. Bulk Rona, a Victini, rather, isn't needed at all because it's weakened, so it's in, like, Fake Out range or Bullet Punch range from Metacham, meta especially after the Psychic Fang. But he actually goes Psychic Fang, I get that right, and then I kill him with U-Turn, so I bring in the Kofarius. He goes Defog. Predictably, so I can go for a come mind, and now I'm like, okay, he's got no ghost resistance, that's great. He taunts me, and I kill him with Shadow Ball, but he goes to Ampharos, and I'm like, oh damn, it's probably like toxic, or like maybe he's like can like boost his stats somehow in Thunderbolt. So I just go Sylveon, but it turns out going Sylveon was right for the wrong reasons. He specs Thunderbolt, which would have took you my plus one Copargus, despite the come mind boost. So I wish here, and yeah, Max is only um, around 51, 50, uh, 52, I believe, but he literally rolled Max at that time, gives my spread. So he's modest, so yeah, um. I, just, I think I actually might have been like 53.3. I think that was the roll. That was max. But yeah, he does that. So I just wish up and I protect. He's got the double iron bash. Unfortunately, I don't have my Metagross here. But I can go Toxic Specs and double iron bash just so little. And now I can set Toxic Specs up, which are going to put the Metacham and the Ampharos on a timer, which means Sylveon plus Aerodactyl is just going to win the game after this. He goes Ampharos again here. So I could just fodder something off. Um, I actually go Sylveon here because I'm like, okay, it's completely useless against double iron bash um, my metal because he still has decent PP on that left. He still has. Um, yeah, six of them left. So I just hyper voice to put it in earthquake range from this. Um, and yeah, it takes out with earthquake afterwards. He's no switching now. Dactyl at this point. And I'm in a great position. He goes my metal. I know I could live in earthquake. So I go toxic specs here. And iron defense toxic specs can ultimately close the game with the toxic spikes helping pave the way. So this is just a toxic specs dominated game. All things considered, we can just move to fast now. And yeah, earthquake's only doing 52 to me. So I could iron defense here. And I could just win the game by eventually just recovering and just knocking him down here. So yeah, we get. Um, a lot of kills with Tox Specs, and Iron Defense actually leads to a sweep, which is funny. Earthquake's only doing like 11%. I just eventually trade knockoffs enough to where I can kill it. He doesn't get a critical crit when after the first Earthquake, because a crit would have to only kill from like 85%. So, yeah, and I was able to prevail against 812, the guy who won this league the first three times. So, it was amazing. He's in headbutts a couple times, and eventually, I just want to preserve the foil because differential matters. So, I don't want to risk a crit. So, I just go Grafagus as it dies to poison. And, yeah, so I win that game. Um, definitely a good game. Thanks for playing A12. And yeah, Iron Defense Toxic is lit. All right, guys. Have a great day. Peace.